Hi everyone and welcome to the Marine Museum's Lighthouse Craft with March of the Museums. My name is Brooke and I am the Programs and Communications Job Shadow Intern with the Marine Museum this semester. Uh, so today we are going to be doing a lighthouse craft with you. Um, but before we start, just going to give a little bit of information on the museum in itself. So the Marine Museum of the Great Lakes at Kingston is dedicated to preserving um, mar uh, maritime heritage um, of the Great Lakes, including um, providing information on local ships, including information on our heritage site of the old um, Kingston shipyards that has our dry dock and the engine house, as well as lighthouses, which we'll be creating today. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. Even though it's virtually, we're very excited to have you. And of course, if you're looking um, for more information on the museum, you can visit our website at marmuseum.ca and you can also sign up for our newsletters to keep up to date on programs that will be coming in the future. So let's get started. Here is all the materials that are included in your kit and then we're going to go over the materials that you'll be using, starting with the red cup, the clear cup, the black piece of paper, a tea light, the little container of white paint, a paintbrush which we'll use from the Murney Tower kit, um, a pair of scissors which you may want an adult to help with using, a pencil or pen, and you can either use glue or tape or something that'll be sticky. So to get started, we are going to take our red cup and turn it and place it upside down. I'm going to move the rest of the materials out of the way for now. So what we'll be starting with is actually painting our lighthouse. So as seen with our example here, we have stripes, white stripes painted on the lighthouse, which is what I'm going to show you today. Of course though, if you wanna get creative and change out the design of your lighthouse and do something else other than stripes, that's totally okay. We'd love to see what you put together. Um, so I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm going to take my little container of paint and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw thin lines to put the outline of my stripe and then I'll use my finger to make my stripes even thicker. So I'll just start by demonstrating that. So you're going to take your paintbrush and I'm going to start at the bottom. And then instead of moving my paintbrush around, I'm going to turn the cup with my paintbrush so that it can, it's a lot easier to move and it keeps the line straight. You may notice as well as you're painting your lines, they, you can see a lot of the redness from the cup coming through and that's okay because we'll be doing a second layer to make the lines more thicker and more white. So as I'm doing this, um, you may be wondering, why are lighthouses important? Well, a main reason why lighthouses are important is because they help provide light for sailors so that they can find <clears throat> their way home um, while they're traveling. So one of the hardest parts for sailors is that they have a hard time seeing in bad weather or at night. So what lighthouses do is that they provide light so that um, they can see the coastline and that they um, avoid running into any rocks that may cause shipwrecks. So now I'm going to start my other outline and I'm just going to do it above the second rib on the red cup and go around just like I did before, turning the red cup. And speaking of shipwrecks, 
there, a fun fact is that there is over 200 shipwrecks in the Kingston area, including Kingston and Napanee down to Belleville and of course the Thousand Islands. So there's lots of shipwrecks surrounding us in the water. And you may be wondering why there's that many. And a lot of it has to do of course with that Kingston used to be a really busy port, but as well there was underwater shawls such as rocks or um, dunes of sand that would cause um, ships to more easily um, crash or sink. So that was just a common reason why there was a lot of shipwrecks around the area. Okay. So I'm going to put my paintbrush down for now. And so the next step is you're going to want to take your finger and then you're going to provide the outline. So I'm going to use my pointer finger because it's a bit bigger to help with doing the outline. I just have a little dab just to try it out. So I'm going to lift my cup so I can angle it better. And again, I'm just going to turn my finger with the cup and go around to make my lines thicker. So another important fact to know about lighthouses is that lighthouses would have a light keeper. So light keepers were very important to lighthouses because they were in charge of making sure that the light was always on and that the lighthouse was being maintained properly so that, of course, we need a lighthouse that's working so that ships can find their way back and can find their way to the shoreline. So they are very important to how a lighthouse works and functions. So I've gone all the way around and there are a few red spots that I can see but when I do my second layer I'll make sure to fix that up so it's okay if you have a bit of red spots on your cup. So again you're going to take your paintbrush and you're going to repeat the same steps as before. So doing the two lines and then of course filling it in with your finger. I'm just going to slowly turn my cup so I keep my line straight as I'm going around. So I'm almost done doing the first line all the way around. And then I'm going to do my second line just a bit lower. All right, so I've done my second line. And now again, I'm going to take my finger and dab a little bit of paint. And I'm gonna rotate it the other way this time just cause it's a bit, feels a bit more natural to have it push towards me so my finger stays flat. So a little bit more history on lighthouses is I'm going to talk a little bit about ancient lighthouses and how they used to work. So of course the original lighthouses were actually just large um, fires on a coastline that sailors would set up so that they could find their way home. But of course this system didn't work out very well because Having large fires on coastlines isn't always the most effective way to see 
um, anything. And so most of the times it wasn't very effective and sailors didn't see the light because it would take lots and lots of fire in order for it to be really noticeable from the shorelines, especially if it was at a low level. Um, which is why they invented the open flame lighthouse. And so the, how the open flame lighthouse worked is that it was built on a tall structure. They designed a tall structure and then had an open flame going at the top of it, um, especially at night. All right, I'm gonna start my next line now. Up. So, as an, an example of an open flame lighthouse, um, was a famous one from ancient Egypt called the Lighthouse of Alexandria, which was built by um, Ptolemy II. This lighthouse was built almost um, 2,300 years ago, and it stood at 118 meters tall. Um, it was once one of the seven greatest wonders of the world because of its very large, tall structure. And it's known for being um, very high advanced technology for its time because they were able to um, elevate a flame on a tall structure and isolate it on top as well, which was um, a big, big progression from having flames on the shoreline. So I have my first line done and I'm just going to do a thin line just above, just below this crease here. and go around. You also may be wondering why lighthouses are painted um, with red and white stripes. And one of the reasons is to do with the landscape where the lighthouse is located. So um, white and red lighthouses that have stripes like this one uh, were mostly used on landscapes that were dark or lighter, such as a white landscape as rocks or cliffs, so that they could be more noticeable to sailors. So I'm just going to take my finger and go all the way around. There we go. So just to kind of finish it off, I'm going to do one more little stripe um, where it's kind of ribbed at the top. So you can use your thin paintbrush for this. You won't need to use your finger. I'm just going to dab a bit of paint and then go all the way around at the top if you choose to do this part. There we go. So that's the first layer of paint. I do recommend doing a second layer of white paint over your lines so that they look more thicker and so that they fill in any red spots. So I'm going to do that off camera and then we'll be back to continue the craft. All right, so I've done my second layer of the paint for the lighthouse. Um, something else to know while you're also painting your second layer, if you have any areas from when you were painting with your finger that kind of globbed up a lot, you can go back with your finger to smooth it out. You can use the paintbrush to smooth out any areas that may have um, globbed up from the paint. Um, but while we wait for, while you're waiting for your paint to dry again, we'll do the next step. Um, with our black piece of paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our clear plastic cup and we're going to turn it upright. And you're going to take your pencil 
and trace the bottom circle of the cup onto the black piece of paper. Uh, I recommend also tracing it on one side of the paper because we're going to need the other side to do other, um, to cut out the doors and windows for the lighthouse afterwards. Okay, so I'm just gonna make it a bit darker so you can see. So there's the outline of the bottom of the cup. So now you're going to take your pair of scissors. Um, you may want a parent or a guardian to help you with this part. And you're going to cut out your um, circle. I'm just going slowly so that I make sure my circle is round as best as it can be. Um, and then for now, you're going to put that off to the side and we're going to come back to it. So now the next step will be creating our doors and windows for the lighthouse. So the example here, you have like a little small door and a window, um, but feel free to do more than one window or make them as large or small as you want. It's your lighthouse, so get creative and um, design it any way that you'd like. You can even add different features than windows or doors if you want. It's totally up to you. So for mine, I'm going to do two windows and a door and I'm going to draw them out before I cut them. All right, so these are the sizes that I've done for my doors and windows, but of course, again, you can make them however big or small as you want. But if you want to use mine as a reference, this is what they look like. And now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut them out. All right, so now I've cut out my door and my two small windows and I'm going to now glue them onto the lighthouse but of course you can also use tape or sticky tab um, something that'll stick it to the cup. I'm going to use a glue stick. I'm just going to put a little bit onto the door. Also just to mention uh, after you do finish painting, I recommend washing your hands. The paint is water-based, so it will come off with soap and water. That's what it looks like currently. And the next part we're going to do, I'm going to put this now back onto this side. And we're going to take our clear plastic cup and we're going to glue our black circle we cut out earlier and glue it on top. And this will be preparing us to make our lens, which I will talk about soon. So that's what it will look like. And I recommend just like pressing it down a bit so that it stays on tight and it doesn't pop up. And if it does, you can always add a bit more glue. Um, but yeah, so the next part will be, of course, um, cutting the cup to create our lens, but to give a little bit of a history lesson on lenses, as we talked about before, the open flame lighthouse um, existed for a long time, but it was replaced after in 1822 when a French man, French man named Augustin Jean um, Fresnel um, designed the, Fre the Fresnel lens. And of course, here I have one behind me. So it worked 
was there was, of course, a light inside of it. Um, and of course, it looks like a glass beehive. And the light inside of it would become concentrated by um, refracting and reflecting off of the different prisms and lenses of the light, of the lens, of the lens. And it would then exit all in one direction and it would reach um, further distances over the horizon of water. And because of it being so effective, it became the go-to technology for about two centuries. Um, and then after that, um, more modern technology came out. Um, but yes, the lenses actually ranged in many different sizes. There was about six different sizes that they ranged in. Um, but one of the biggest sizes it could be up to is 12 feet, which is about two, two of the size of, of your parents put together one on top of the other. And so, of course, the lenses could be this large because if there was foggy coastline conditions, they would need to be able to see the light, and that's why a bigger lens would be used. But yeah, so that's just a little bit of history on the Fresnel lens. And so now we are going to finish um, cutting our lens so that we can put it on top of our lighthouse, which I have over here. And then I'm just going to put the example back over here. And so you're going to take your scissors. I, I do recommend you may want to ask an adult, like a parent or a guardian, to help with this part because it is a bit tricky to cut the cup, especially with the rim, because we're going to be cutting the rim off. So um, how far you want to cut up to start is you want to go about just in the middle between the top rib and the rim. So you want to be about just in the middle. So like half an inch, but in the middle part. So I'm going to cut just a little bit up and I recommend going very slowly. Okay, so I'm going to slowly begin cutting through the rim upwards. So it's okay if you accidentally cut a little too far up. We're just going to start still from the middle in between the rib and the rim and begin to cut the rim off the cup. Just going to go around slowly so that you don't crack the cup. To reach the end, you now have your rim off, which is good. So you can put that off to the side. I'm just going to, as you can see, it just kind of got a little rough near the end. So I'm just going to trim that part off so it looks even for when I put it onto the lighthouse. So now our lens is ready to go on top, but of course, last but not least, we need our light for our lighthouse. And as you can see, there's a switch at the bottom that you're going to turn on for your light. Um, and this light is artificial light um, rather than natural light. So natural light comes from the sun and artificial light um, is created through like either electricity or batteries such as this one. Um, and things like light bulbs or flashlights. So now we're going to put our light on top of our lighthouse, take our lens and our roof and put it nicely on top and just push down a bit slightly so it stays on. And now you have your finished lighthouse. So now that we're all done making our lighthouse, even though we can't see you in person, we would still love to see um, the amazing lighthouses that you have created. So we encourage you to post a photo on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, and tag the Marine Museum so that we can see your creations and it'll give you a chance to be featured on one of our social media pages. Um, as well as, as you've noticed in our little 
display here, we have little paper origami um, boats. And you can find the video on YouTube, um, on our YouTube channel, where you can create those as an extra activity to do at home with your family or friends. So thank you so much for joining to meet me today and making the lighthouse craft with the Marine Museum. Um, you can come and visit us in person at the Portsmouth um, Olympic Harbor, where we are located currently, and we're open from 10 to 4 p.m. Um, Monday to Friday. And then of course, um, coming up this later this spring and early summer, we'll be moving back to our historic site located on 55 Ontario Street. So keep an eye on our website and check out our newsletters um, to know when that move will be happening and what programs um, will be held there in the future. So thank you everyone and bye.